Welcome to Earthkeeper Stargate videos. The following interview with author, Geo Engineer and Channel James Dibron is quite interesting, covering a variety of truly fascinating topics. Discussion areas include the living earth, sacred sites, planetary transition, consciousness, the human shift, ley lines, vortexes, portals, grid systems, solar radiation, ionic ratios, multidimensionality, antimatter, angels, and the purpose of life. Enjoy and namaste. Today we are excited to have a very special guest with us, James Tiburon. James worked as a professional engineer and geologist for 33 years. As a geologist, he had the opportunity to study the earth on every continent. He has lived and worked abroad for those 33 years, circumnavigating the globe many times and traveling to over 85 countries in his work. He has always had a very deep love for the earth and a driven interest in spirituality and metaphysics. During his years of working abroad, he devoted himself to intense metaphysical studies of various disciplines and has focused on understanding the energy of the living earth. He is considered to be one of the world's most knowledgeable experts on earth energies, sacred sites, grids, ley lines, portals, vortexes, healing gems, crystals, auric maintenance, EMF, light body, and spiritual growth. And his goal has been to merge the scientific with the spiritual, forming the integral circle. James is a member of the Sierra Club and a staunch environmentalist. He has a great love for the planet and believes the earth to be the living sentience of Gaia. He has visited over 300 sacred sites across the globe over the past four decades. He has been a guest speaker at the Elder Speak Conference in Sedona, Arizona, an Eagle and Condor Elders Gathering in Peru. James has hosted many conferences and has been a guest on numerous metaphysical radio programs. He has also recently been to the United Nations seat in New York as the featured speaker to the UN seat. He has had numerous shamanic journeys in Mexico and South America and earned initiations in seven vision quests and multiple shamanic journeys. He has authored four books, co-written a fifth with Lee Carroll and Tom Kenyon, and is writing his sixth book on the metaphysical healing properties of gemstones. Welcome, James Tiburon, to the show. We are so excited to have you as our guest here today. Thank you. It's a, it's a, a real honor to be here, and I thank you for the opportunity. Well, it's an absolute pleasure. I'm so excited to have you on the show today. We both are, James, and uh, very much of my work over the last few years with the grids and ley lines of the planet has been inspired by your work and has been confirmed by uh, so many of the messages that you're bringing through from Metatron. So if we could just jump in first of all and ex get you to explain a little bit about what exactly it is that you're doing for the listeners that maybe aren't quite familiar with the work of the grids and the ley lines and the portals, etc. Well, we feel that the Earth is a living conscious sentience and that uh, there are energies on the earth that are being refashioned, that are being reactivated in what Metatron refers to of the new earth. Um, you know, so many people thought that the ascension of humanity occurred on, um, you know, the equinox or the, the solstice of 2012. And what Metatron has always said, that that was the upshift of the Earth. He defined the planetary ascension as an expansion of the Earth into 12 dimensions. And there are a lot of factors that are scientifically based 
I've discussed with people like Graham Hancock, John Van Ocken, and have studied the work of uh, Bill Bueller, that we feel that the coronal mass ejections, the solar winds, uh, the solar flares that have bombarded the planet for the past 20 years, uh, and there have been, in fact, more X-class solar flares, more X-class coronal mass ejections in the past two decades than any other time uh, in, uh, since they were recorded. And what these have done is to change the anionic background of the Earth. And it's interesting because Dr. Bernice Barlow wrote a book entitled Sacred Sites of the West about uh, 15 years ago. And she referenced a study, a university endorsed study of the way that the ion ratio of the Earth affects the human consciousness. And the normal uh, resonance of, uh, of positive ions to negative uh, ions, and a positive ion is called a cation, and a negative uh, is called an, an, uh, an anon. The, the normal shift, the normal ratio, I should say, of uh, cations to anions is something like three to five. And in this study, they determined that when the anionic, the cationic ratio was shifted to six to one, that uh, humans began to have what they referred to as hallucinations. They began to have out-of-body experiences. And so what the way that Bernice talked about this is that there are sacred sites that have always been recognized by the uh, indigenous people, by the ancestral societies, not just the Native Americans, but the Native people all across the earth, from uh, in Africa, in Australia, in, in all of the regions. And that many of the holy places, many of the sacred sites, had natural mineralogical structures that created this six to one ratio. And so, that is why the indigenous people, the people that were connected to the living consciousness of the earth, were drawn to these places. And in these natural mineralogical fields with that shifted ratio, they had their visions. They found that it was easier, as the test in California at the university uh, suggested, that when that six to one ratio occurs, the pineal gland is open. That's not the university conclusion. That is my own. Uh, their conclusion, in fact, and this is kind of funny uh, and standard for the mainstream of academia, but their conclusion was that out-of-body experiences, uh, mystical experiences, and the abduction scenario was all a hallucination uh, due to uh, the electromagnetic induction with the uh, human, human nervous system. I, on the other hand, believe that what is happening here is that that ratio does a shift that activates the pineal gland and puts us through that gateway. And it's amazing, and it is a confirmation that the indigenous societies, the Native Americans, recognized this, that they were told by the spirits of the living earth that if they go to a certain location, their vision quest would be more enhanced. And in fact, you know, certain of these areas, like uh, the ones that occur in Sedona, Arizona, um, were meant primarily for vision quest, not for uh, people to reside and stay in all the time, because these essentially become portals, these essentially become stargates. Um, I had the opportunity to do an interview with uh, Zuni elder Clifford Mahuti a few days ago, and I, uh, I met Clifford uh, last year, in fact, in Arizona, when we were both being uh, interviewed uh, for a uh, special uh, television series regarding uh, uh, national parks, and this one was about the Grand Canyon, and so we were both being interviewed by the Travel Channel, and uh, his interview fascinated me, and so we became friends, and uh, he uh, began speaking at uh, uh, some of our events and gatherings. And so uh, it is interesting then that the normal ratio of uh, anions to cations began shifting uh, with the uh, X 
class uh, solar flares with all of the coronal mass ejections. There have been billions and billions and billions of tons of anionic energies uh, that have been bombarded in the earth. And so what the result is, is that there is now, and this is provable in science, this is provable through the NASA website, there are jet streams, there are permanent uh, movement streams of anionic energies that are circulating the earth now that can be tracked and were not there before. So I believe that this is the mechanism for the shift of the earth. Uh, it is true, uh, uh, to paraphrase the words of uh, Graham Hancock, that uh, we are a society uh, who have encouraged the beta state, uh, the beta alpha states of consciousness, of alert consciousness, and that we have disregarded uh, the uh, theta states of consciousness, the dream states. Our society uh, almost discourages a person to be a dreamer, whereas ancient societies recognize that uh, when we enter these other states of consciousness, we tune into a greater frequency. Uh, a greater uh, landscape, a greater horizon of dimensional uh, realities. And it is truly in the theta state of consciousness that we are able now to join together and co-create the reality of the new earth. So many people have said, you know, what happened on 2012? I don't see any change. Well, what I suggest, what we suggest, is that the planet shifted to a new matrix, to an expanded energy field in 2012 through mechanisms such as the coronal mass ejections that absolutely changed the ionic ratio of the planet that allows us now to more effectively go into higher states of consciousness. And when we go into higher states of consciousness through the pineal activation, uh, it is then that we are able to rise above the third dimension and work in non-polarity fields in which we are able to access more effectively our true identity, our true nature, and communicate with uh, a far greater source of consciousness, and that includes our own higher self. Wow, what a fabulous explanation you have brought forth for us. And it's so empowering because people are experiencing this. They're feeling it because it's truly happening. And it is our rational mind that brings forth doubt that questions these experiences because like you say, we become so disconnected from those different brainwave states, the dreamlike states and we we question them we're actually uncomfortable with them because we become so removed from them the explanation that you have just brought forth and the science that you bring to it helps people to have that left brain information they need to then flow into this process and say okay my left brain gets it now I'm willing to go a little bit further into this. That makes perfect sense what you shared. So thank you for that incredibly powerful introduction. And it really, what you're showing us is this is a cosmological process that's going on and it's occurring all around us and with us. And this is why the Hopi prophecy said, push off from the edge of the shore. Because if we allow ourselves to be in the flow with this, it's truly a miraculous journey. So I'm, I'm really grateful for the introduction and Clifford Mahoudi also um, is a special man in my life. Um, James, I, I was um, honored to drive with Clifford to Zuni Nation uh, recently and he invited me to stay for the Blue Kachina ceremony. Um, and when we got there, the guidance told me, no, no, I had been brought there to work the grids and ley lines and that I was not going to be staying for three days for the, in, waiting for the Blue Kachina ceremony that I needed to work the grids and ley lines of the area. So that's a nice tie-in with Clifford. Thank you. Well, he is an amazing, he's, a, he's an absolutely amazing man and he's a man of courage. And he's a man that walks in two worlds because 
About uh, 15 years ago, and I lived most of my life, uh, Lynn and, and uh, Nancy, I lived most of my life as a foreigner, uh, so I'm not a typical quote-unquote American. I uh, left the United States in 1977, and I uh, worked abroad for 33 years, always as a foreigner. And uh, I lived in South America for nine years. I lived in Africa for six years. I lived in, uh, in India, Russia, uh, all of these interesting uh, places that allowed me to expand my uh, horizons. Um, and they also allowed me a unique format to, uh, to study metaphysics. I, uh, I tell people that I grew up in the crystal vortex of Arkansas as a, uh, as a devout Baptist. And uh, <laughs> I came back thirty. <laughs> I came back thirty years later uh, with a, a completely different uh, mindset, and uh, caused a lot of concern among my uh, among my family, who still pray for me. But uh, I was able to expand my uh, uh, belief on the nature of reality, uh, particularly in Brazil. Uh, and it was originally through the Edgar, through the uh, works of Edgar Casey and. Uh, but I found myself in a unique situation where I was never in an English-speaking country. And so um, I didn't watch television. I, I had a metaphysical awakening on the banks of the Amazon River in 1978 when a, uh, a man from Germany uh, gave me a copy of uh, the biography of Edgar Casey, There Is a River, written by Thomas Suter. And it answered all the questions that Christianity and its orthodox uh, expression did not. And, uh, and it expressed it in a way that I could relate to because Edgar Casey was also a, uh, a uh, Christian. And so when these concepts uh, in his readings of reincarnation, of karma, of, uh, of all of these interesting aspects about uh, past lives came through, he had initial doubts. As did I, and so uh, uh, I had I read that book cover to cover on the banks of the Amazon River, and it absolutely put me on fire. I, for the next thirty years, I, I I read every metaphysical book I could get my hands on. I was uh, in in retrospect, I had put myself in a setup where uh, it was easy to do that study uh, because the television in most of these countries. Uh, was not appealing to me, <laughs> and so I, uh, I read metaphysics, and I studied it, and I and I had these experiences in a situation where there was not a peer pressure, where there was not a cultural dogma that uh, kept me from experiencing these things. And being a geologist, I always had a tremendous interest in the living earth. And so, uh, what I was allowed to uh, to learn by being a uh, expatriate, by being a foreigner, and not necessarily speaking the language when I first got into these countries, is that I learned out of necessity to communicate non-verbally with people. Uh, you know, part of my experience has always been that uh, I look like an American. <laughs> and, uh, and that's not always a good thing when you're outside the United States. And so... Uh, um, I was in certain situations where I needed to determine if this taxi driver was going to be okay to take me to where I was going or, or if he had ulterior motives. So I learned how to uh, look at people and, uh, and read them. And uh, I experienced three coup d'etats when I lived in Africa. In fact, my family and I were rescued by the French Foreign Legion in 1990 uh, when a uh, coup d'etat occurred in uh, the country of Gabon in Africa. And so we experienced uh, situations where we needed to rely on nonverbal communications, and what that did was uh, open uh, open the pineal glands, of course. And so I learned how to uh, experience these things uh, from that uh, from that perspective. And so my studies uh, in uh, uh, in metaphysics grew, and I was in the situation where my job allowed me to go to sacred sites, to go to power nodes, and I tried to understand them, not simply from a metaphysical standpoint, but to look for the forgotten science behind them. And, and people like Bernice Barlow, people like Greg Braden, people uh, like um, um, Dr. Uh, Luis uh, Montaigne, 
uh, have done tremendous amounts of work uh, in explaining how mineralogies, uh, how certain geologies ex uh, are the uh, are the driving forces um, and are the mechanisms of uh, the sentience of the living earth in terms of its uh, ner uh, nervous system, which uh, is of course the ley lines and portals which could be considered like uh, meridians and so I went uh, over these 30 years of being uh, an expatriate I had the opportunity to circumnavigate the globe many times and it was a lonely existence and very hard in many ways it's hard to you know be a foreigner and eventually I did learn to speak the languages I, I, I speak French Spanish and Portuguese not because I studied it but because I had no choice <laughs> And and so those were interesting ex, uh, experiences, and I um, I began to understand uh, a little bit more about how the geology of certain sacred sites influences the nature of of, of this system, and and so that's what I wrote about in my uh, first book, where I uh, focus on the energy of sacred sites and the geometry. This is where Bill Bueller came in and became a teacher for me. I, uh, I studied the Rochelle grid systems under Bill at one point. I think I printed, he, you know, he sent, he's just a wealth of information. Uh, and I, we're speaking about the William Bueller, who now resides in uh, Crestone, uh, Colorado. But uh, at one point, I think I had over 250 emails uh, of his teachings that I printed out and was able to put in, in a... Uh, uh, a file uh, that I studied, and uh, in a, you know his work is brilliant. It's hard to read, sometimes. <laughs> but I but I uh, I studied it, and uh, and he's a, he's a, and I began to try to learn about uh, the Rochelle grids and all of the uh, systems that set up. So it's always been fascinating to me because um, I. You know, I used to hear people speaking about ley lines and speaking about portals, and I would hear different people say, uh, well, there's a portal in your backyard or there's a ley line going through your house, and I, I knew there was more to it than that. There's a, there has to be a scientific basis. So my theory uh, that uh, that absolutely, in my mind, confirms the uh, the, the energy structures that are here is that the Earth, uh, in essence, is a uh, has on its surface a floating ocean of electrical energies of mm -hmm. uh, of a very high spectrum, and that these energies, in a sense, if you imagine them floating, think of them as a as an ocean. There is a say an ocean of energy floating on the surface of the Earth. Now the Earth and this is science, emits a negative charge, uh, and I don't like to use the word negative and positive. We'll refer to it as an anionic charge. And uh, the Earth emits an anionic field that goes all the way up uh, to the stratosphere, which occurs at about 30,000 feet, roughly. And uh, that space between the surface of the Earth and 30,000 feet above the Earth uh, is essentially a capacitor meaning that it holds an electrical charge. Uh, and so uh, this field that surrounds the Earth is where all of our lightning comes from. And, uh, and it is referred to as the Schumann resonance. And interestingly, it has an uh, electrical charge of 7.85 hertz, or did before the ascension. And that is also the same Hertzian measurement as the uh, human brainwave of the Thadian field. And so inside this capacitor that, sounds, that surrounds the uh, surface of the Earth, uh, all of the, um, that ocean of energy that sits on the surface of the Earth becomes dynamic. And so by dynamic, I mean it doesn't sit there in a static way. It's not like a pond with no movement it begins to develop currents. It is dynamic. And so the, this field of energy uh, flows into little brooks that become streams that become big rivers. 
And so that is the natural flow. And how do these energies flow was uh, a great part of my interest. And because they are electrical uh, in nature, electromagnetic in nature, they're going to flow along lines of conductivity. And the conductivity comes from the different minerals on the surface and in the interior of the earth. That makes sense. Uh, you know, these are uh, electrical flows, and so they're going to flow in uh, patterns of conductivity, uh, in copper deposits, in iron deposits, in uh, uh, through waters, uh, through saline materials. And salt water is an absolutely tremendous conductor of electricity. Uh, but they also flow, uh, particularly when they get into these uh, big rivers, uh, through the uh, through the metallic formations and they flow in certain patterns. And so these become what the Asians refer to as dragon lines. They become concentrated, and they reach a concentrated status in which there is an awareness associated to them because we have to understand that the entire planet is alive, the entire planet is conscious. And so the ancient people, the Compestrial societies, the Native Americans, the... Uh, uh, the Aborigines, the, the tribal societies that uh, communicated uh, more directly with the living energies of the earth became aware of these energies, knew where they flew, knew where they, uh, knew where they uh, flowed, I should say, and understood uh, the nature of these. And I think that it was the Atlanteans uh, who mastered the science of the grids, uh, of the ley lines, and uh, were among the first to set up these amplifying stations uh, uh, in pyramidal geometries uh, to amplify these. Uh, Dr. Samir Osmanagic has uh, spoken at several of our conferences on, uh, 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 on the nature of uh, pyramids and why they occur in certain locations. Richard C. Hoagland, uh, who will be at our Arizona event, uh, is brilliant uh, in his um, um, theories of torsion physics uh, and how uh, a star tetrahedron uh, is the format used uh, in uh, most planets uh, to uh, to regulate the energies, and that's why he suggests that 19.5 latitudes are are really really key because if you take the the sphere of the Earth and put a star tetrahedron inside it, the two points on the uh, uh, above and below the equators are at 19.5 latitude. So it's a, it's a fascinating topic. and um, But the Earth is alive, and the shift that is occurring now is one that is meant, in my opinion, to allow us to operate more effectively above duality realms. I believe that there are 12 dimensions now available on the Earth for the first time in thousands and thousands of years. And Yay. this, is, <laughs> this is the planetary ascension. I'm, uh, so so I'll, I'll pause here and let you comment. I don't mean to speak nonstop, sorry. James, we're loving it. We're loving every minute of what you're sharing here. And uh, Nancy, if you don't mind, if I just jump in with another question here, because um, we're, we're so grateful for everything that you're bringing forward and the science piece of it is such an essential piece as I've mentioned to help us bring in our, our, our left brain, our rational mind to begin to understand what's really happening here so that people can begin to celebrate and embrace and explore the quantum leap that our consciousnesses are being offered at this time and certainly I'm feeling that 12 dimensional thing in my life. Um, we are coming up to an equinox, James, and uh, there's a lot of significance with the alignments astrologically that are coming. We have this big grand cardinal cross, a lunar eclipse in the middle of April, and you're doing a very special trip around some of those special alignments. So I'm wondering if you could tie in uh, what's happening with the equinox and um, something that I've seen referred to as the harmony portal etc and maybe just help us understand what's occurring right now that's really significant that people might want to look further into 
Well, that's a great question, Lynn. And before I answer that, I'd just like to comment on, you know, what you mentioned about the science. And, uh, you know, Metatron says that religion, current religion, omits science. And that science omits the sacred. And that what is happening now is the requisite integral circle of combining the two. And so that's why I feel really drawn to bring the science into the spiritual and the spiritual into the science. The, um, the Edgar Casey work, you know, really is, uh, and I'm sure you've read Edgar Casey. The Edgar Casey work is really uh, highly based in his, uh, uh, you know, study of the Bible. He was very, very religious, and so it really carries, uh, in a sense, that Christos energy. But there is an interesting quotation from the Edgar Casey readings that I often use, and that is paraphrased, and it is an actual Casey reading, that mankind will learn more about the nature of God through science than religion. Mm-hmm. And so that, wow. that's an amazing, amazing piece of uh, information and uh, is, is, is a really beautiful way to tie in both the spiritual and the scientific because in an integral way, that's what we're doing now in the uh, new energies. And so to refer to your uh, question about the equinoxes, the e- there are certain events uh, astrologically that create apertures, that create uh, downloads into the, uh, the frame of our reality on the on the earth and the earth is more than one uh, phase of itself uh, and these equinoxes solstices and eclipses are very very special of course there are uh, other astrological alignments that tie into these but these create pockets in which energy is able to be transduced from higher dimension into the earth plane in order to upshift the frequency, upshift the energy uh, to, to bring us into a higher vibration. And so the equinoxes that occur in, uh, in March and September, the solstices that occur in June and December, and then the various uh, lunar and solar eclipses that come in are um, mechanisms of the delivery of certain codes and you know Metatron speaks about the nature of our reality being geometric in nature light uh, we are beings of light and light has a geometric structure if you look at a human cell and, and take it down to its atomic and molecular structures it is all sacred geometry and so the nature of our physical reality is geometric and the nature of our light uh, uh, soul essence is also geometric and when these earth energies began to shift through these apertures through these portals through these times of downloads they have certain codes uh, that tie in with what is happening and so what I am told is happening in year two of the new earth 2013 was year one of the new earth the new matrix the new 12 dimensional structure 2014 then is year two of the earth uh, is that certain codes certain frequencies are being upshifted and this includes activations of a new chakric system of a new light body essence we have shifted from a magnetic grid to a crystalline grid a magnetic grid by nature was polar it had a north pole it had a south pole uh, it had an anionic aspect and a cationic aspect, aspect positive negative so 3d is still controlled in a polarity way uh, and that is the nature of duality uh, you know the the whole my interpretation of the whole biblical story of Adam and Eve uh, you know, the, uh, the Bible says that mankind came and God reached into Adam's rib and pulled out the female aspect. Well, the original phrase, uh, the, the original Latin word for rib is cote, 
uh, and uh, which means side. And so basically, the human soul is neither male nor female. Our intelligence is is integral. It contains the aspects of both. But when we come into the university of Earth, the, the duality plane, uh, we split into uh, into a duality aspect. Every person is, in truth, neither male nor female, but both. And uh, in duality, we experience the uh, experience the two, and that's what the, I think the uh, Adam and Eve Garden of Eden thing is. You know, with the with the um, experience of duality, eating the tree of knowledge. You know, we suddenly become aware of a new existence and the and the Kundalini reality represented by the serpent. And so we experience duality uh, specifically in the third dimension to learn how to be responsible creators. It is the field in which choices are available. Uh, and uh, it is a purposed illusion to allow us to grow into our godhood, to learn how to be powerful creators. And Metatron says something very beautiful uh, he says that uh, when the power, when the love of power is replaced by the power of love, humanity will make a quantum leap. And then he adds this, but love without strength is incomplete. And so to me that speaks volumes. We're not here simply to, um, you know, to, to, to experience uh, all the nuances of what's here without a purpose. We are here to learn that we are co-creators of our reality, that what we see around us, we have created. And so I believe that this upshift in 12 dimensions allows us for the first time in eons to rise above the duality level of 3D into non-duality planes of a crystalline field and I think that the magnetic grid is being replaced by the crystalline grid, and the crystalline grid allows us to move into higher dimensions through the pineal gateway. And it is there that we will create the new Earth. In fact, the role of humanity did not stop in 2012. It began in 2012. Now we have the tools in place to create a world of harmony, to create a world of peace, but it's not going to happen by itself. We have to orchestrate this. One hundred, you know, the Bible speaks of 144,000 uh, being uh, the number of the of the rapture, being a very powerful, creative number. And if you, you know, if we, with us expanding into 12 dimensions, it is 12 squared that goes into 144,000. And I'm getting into numerology here. But this is what is happening in the new earth, that we now need to gather our masses, need to gather people to meditate together, to create a world of highest good. And if we take one look around now, we can see that, you know, the, the polarity aspects of the world are in high gear. There are wars, there are rumors of wars, there is greed. Uh, there is all sorts of things happening on the planet that we need to resolve, that we need to understand. And there will always be that alpha-type personality in corporate worlds that are after control, that want the love of power rather than the power of love. And how do we deal with that? How do we face that challenge is what we are coming to now. And this is what these equinoxes, these solstices, these eclipses are coding us. It is giving us the energy activations to understand how to become co-creators through the higher dimensional field of theta, coherent consciousness. And so when we go to the portals, when we go to the places that carry these special energies that allow for multi dimensional overlays that allow for Rochelle grid structures to exist. We go into infinity points on the earth and when we meditate there together and uh, we receive the codes and we become code carriers of this new energy, we activate the new chakric systems. In 2012, when the matrix expanded to 12 dimensions, we went beyond the uh, early seven chakra system to the 12 chakra system to the 30 
three chakra systems. And it's going to take us a, a, a few years to learn how to operate in these higher dimensions lucidly. It's going to take us a while to learn how to navigate through these higher chakras, but they're there. People are starting to see evidence now of new forms of life. There's a study being done uh, at Duke University about what they call light spikes and elves. There's also a study in the University of uh, Alaska because there are light formations that are now occurring on the earth that appear to be alive. Uh, light sprites, they call them, and uh, some of them they're calling crabs or jellyfish. In fact, there was a um, there was a crop circle in Wiltshire in England about three years ago of one of these. And so what that indicates is that there are multi-dimensionality is now coming into focus in the greater dimensional field, and we are beginning to see other forms of life beyond uh, physical life that we are starting to see. Uh, the greater realities of, of all forms of consciousness. And these are indications that our frequency is being upshifted. We're going from old uh, analog television to digital television. We're going to high, defini high definition. Uh, the pixels of life force on the planet are increasing. And one of the mechanisms is the, the uh, solar flares, the coronal mass ejections, and the coding is being shifted in equinoxes, solstices, and eclipses. Well, in fact, we, uh, Nancy and I, did an interview with Grandmother Silverstar yesterday, and she was um, also talking about this and talking about how at the moment of the equinox, we hit a zero point moment and so she was encouraging people and explaining how they can make altars and how they can intentionally tie into this zero point moment which then gives us access to those higher levels of information and then the information unfolds in us over time and much like you said it's like we're we've gotten an upgrade in our in our own personal spaceship our human bodies and we're getting a whole new owner's manual to learn how to operate at this level so it's it's exciting it's a little bit of bumble and stumble and um and it's such a glorious time to share in celebration together this this upgrade that's occurring so thank you for helping us to understand the significance of the equinox and solstices uh, because we've really become disconnected from that and once we start to realize our connection it empowers people it gives people the opportunity to in a free will universe choose to participate and choose to tap into these opportunities for upgrades so that's a fantastic explanation thank you well thank you and you know you you reference zero point there and that's uh, that's beautiful what uh, uh, what the grandmother shared with you there and I was I spoke at the Edgar Casey Foundation with Greg Braden with Dr. Greg Braden a few months ago and I had the opportunity to ask him you know he in, he was the one that first brought out the zero point information uh, in terms of, uh, of that uh, that description of using zero point energy and zero point energy in a scientific basis would be described as a field in which there is no electromagnetic attraction. And, uh, and, and if you think about that, the three, uh, and, and put it into a dimensional perspective, my interpretation would be that uh, zero point uh, will never exist in the third dimension because that is a magnetic dimension. But zero point will exist in a non-polarity field from the dimensions of five through twelve, and so uh, because they are non-polarity, they are there. There is non-polarity, uh, uh, and so our challenge now uh, is that as these equinoxes flow in, the keys, the codes for us to shift above third dimension to learn how to navigate in the zero-point fields. That is where the co-creation of the new planet exists. There was a study. Uh, by uh, the RAND think tank in California a few years ago into a project taken on by the Maharishi 
university in which they organize, and this is interesting, uh, a certain number of people to meditate together in coherent field toward, toward uh, lowering the crime in specific major cities. And the RAND think tank is, is a very, very accredited group. They're very mainstream. And the studies that they put in place were very scientifically oriented. But this group of something like 700 people meditating toward peace, uh, uh, toward harmony, uh, and it was a key factor that they, they, they did not meditate on, quote unquote, lowering crime, but on raising the vibration. And it's an important distinction. But when they did that, every city had uh, lower crime uh, in the areas that they were meditating, uh, you know, the locations. And so these people were doing this coherently together. And, uh, and coherency is something I'll talk about another time. But coherency is a type of light that occurs. And, uh, and our sun is shifting from unconditional uh, light to, uh, I mean, from conditional to unconditional love, you might say. Our sun does not produce coherent energy, but it is shifting, and it is leading the way uh, to our physical shift. Uh, and so this idea of zero point coming in through the equinoxes is absolutely on key. Uh, it is the equinoxes and solstices in this portal of harmony that's occurring in year two that will lead us to the monumental year of 2038, and I'll talk about that another time, but 2038 uh, is a very, very important uh, milestone. It's the next step. 2012 put us into uh, 12 dimensions. It is now our job to create peace, to create harmony coherently. Uh, and, uh, you know, uh, it's been said many times that you'll never end war by hating war. You will only end war by loving peace. And so we have to become harmonic. We have to uh, rise into these zero point non polarity dimensions because that is where creativity occurs. And our role on the earth plane is to learn how to create responsibly, to learn how to be master creators. And in 3D, uh, there is the duality. There is this doctor that makes house calls called cause and effect. And, uh, and in this universe of duality, we see firsthand the results of what we create. And, uh, and that cause and effect is, in a sense, a, uh, a great teacher. Uh, it is how we learn. It is very often when we are in states of conundrum, when we are in states of great confusion, uh, that we are forced to face our challenges and then transcend them. And so a very important point in metaphysics and spirituality is that we learn how to operate effectively in 12 dimensions. The 3D dimension is not a bad dimension. And from a higher plane, it is the teacher. It is the cause and effect plane. But it is through that plane that we graduate into the higher realms uh, in which uh, we create what comes back down. And it's a complete process. So briefly, the point is that all of us in metaphysics, all of us that are spiritual people, need to keep our feet on the ground. We need to be able to effectively work in 3D in order to go higher. We master the challenges of 3D by facing them, by dealing with them. And we deal with them in the creative state above 3D. And that is where creation occurs. Does that, does that make sense? Am I... Uh, oh, yes. Am I... Um, how amazing of an example right here. of uh, and, and that's the thing. I mean, so many people think, well, 2012, what now? Uh, well, 2012 wasn't the end. 2012 was the beginning. We now have the tools. We now have better tools to uh, to go into the pineal, to operate in higher dimension. And it is in higher dimension that we will co-create uh, the new earth. Uh, it's not going to disappear, uh, the duality. It's not meant to disappear. It's meant to be managed. And that is the, uh, and that ties back 
to the to the ancient philosophy of Maya, of illusion, and that is that everything that we see here is a dream, and it is time for the dreamer to awaken. This is a purposed illusion, and we are in a format that learns, allows us to see how what we mentally project becomes manifest into reality. And so there is not a better opportunity, a better school for gods in training to learn the responsibility of how to create uh, beauty, how to create the science of love. And so these tools are being given to us. Everything we see is our creation. And we can either become, we can either remain unconscious creators or we can become, as we will do, conscious creators of this reality. And it is a school called the University of Earth. There is a teacher called Cause and Effect. And through meeting the challenges, not by fighting, but by detachment, yet aggressive meditation together, for love, for peace, for highest good, we can learn the complex science of love that allows us to graduate into mastery. We can take the different movements, the different instrumentations called lifetimes, and we can fold them into a symphony that becomes a work of art. And that's what we're here to do. Multi-dimensionality is more accessible to us now because of the core of mass ejection, because of the upshifting of the grid system, because of the diminishing of the polarity grid and the increasing of the crystalline frequency. And we can go into the science of the angelic realm, which is our true nature. And if we were to determine the nature of the angelic realm, of our highest essence, in scientific terms, it would be called antimatter. If we were to look at our chakric systems in a different scientific sense, they could be considered particle accelerators that shift us from the world of physical matter, which occupies less than 7% of the known cosmos and is the exception to the rule, and it can shift us into the realm of antimatter, which is our true source, which is a world of unbelievable energy. And it is the angelic realm. Antimatter is not the opposite of matter. Matter occurs on a spectrum just like light. And at one end is antimatter, and at the other end is matter. The field of matter occupies a small part of the cosmos, but it is where duality, the university of duality exists, and we're here to master it, and all of us will in time. Wow. James, this has been a fascinating interview. We are so grateful for the wisdom that you have brought forth and shared with us today. And we hope that you will be joining us on some more shows to continue this conversation with us. Well, I would, uh, I would love to.